When I think of zigzag lines, it makes me think of waves rolling onto a beach, a cocktail in one hand, a book in the other and relaxing. And that's what I think when I look at this design. When I worked on this design and I came up with it, I wasn't sure about it, but actually once I had finished sewing it, I realized that there were a lot of possibilities that could be done using this design. And I really actually liked it a lot more than I expected. So let's find out and talk about zigzag lines. Hello, I am Tom the Colourblind Quilter and we are back after an unexpected break in our This Is How You Quilt It series. And if you want to know more about This Is How You Quilt It and what on earth I'm talking about, I'll put a link in the corner to the playlist so you can catch up and see what's been going on. But in this video and this series, we are making quilting designs using our walking foots on our sewing machine. We're talking about prep, sewing, we're looking at example quilts, and then at the end of the series, we're making a flip book of all these designs so that when you're sitting with a finished quilt top and you don't know what to do, you can just flick through, pick a design and get on with your quilting. And there is gonna be example quilts at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around to see those because those are so helpful to visualize what a design will look like and give you an idea of how this might fit in with your project. There is a link in the description below to the worksheet that tells you everything that you need and all the prep that you need to do so that you can take part in the series and that you can sew along with every video. So get that in the description below. So let's get started. Now this is a little bit involved in the prep. This looks really intense, but bear in mind it's just because I'm doing it on a small square. This will not be so intense when you do it on a big quilt. And I will talk about a few ways to make this faster at the end of the video. But I think that this design looks great as either an all over quilting design for a whole quilt top or in borders or sashing to really make your block stand out. And I also think that doing mirrored versions of this and tweaking and playing with it would actually create some really lovely visual effects as well. And we'll talk a little bit about them more in the video. So in the difficulty rating, this gets a two out of five. It's not difficult, it just looks difficult. But once you know how to do it and what you're doing, it's dead easy. The cuddle rating though, let's talk about this for a second. Based on this spacing that I'm doing in the sample quote, I'm giving this a three out of five. If you were to do this much closer together like matchstick quoting, that would probably be four or five out of five, as in it's much more dense. If you were to do these really wide apart on a quilt, like six, seven inches, then you would get a softer, fluffier quilt. But I am saying three out of five based on what you're gonna see in the sample that I am sewing today. So let's do the prep, let's get it done. We are going to make a grid starting with vertical lines spaced half an inch apart and you want to start half an inch in from the side of your sample. And just use your ruler, line the edges up and that will help to keep the lines nice and straight. All in all, once you finish, you will end up with 18 lines across. You can see I'm just using the lines on the ruler with the top and the bottom of the square as well as lining up the previous lines on the ruler to keep it straight. Now turn it 90 degrees to the left and you are going to repeat this making a second set of lines but this time you are going to space them one inch apart to create a rectangular grid. Again use all the lines on your ruler to line things up and keep things as straight as possible. Now once we've done that, we want to rotate it back to where we started and we are going to draw connecting lines from corner to corner and we are starting from the top right corner to the bottom left corner and then the top left to the bottom right and then repeat that all the way down the sample to create a zigzag. And just use your ruler to line up from corner to corner. There you have it. Just show you that again one more time. Do make sure that you start all the lines in the same direction so you get a consistent look. Now if you like shortcuts and you want to go faster, you can sew all the lines in the same direction at the same time. So you can see I'm doing all the right to left and then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do all the left to right. And this makes it go even faster. Again, this footage is sped up. But now I'm taking a second shortcut and doing all the right to lefts in every other block. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do all the left to rights. And this just helps to save a little bit of time moving the ruler about. And you want to repeat that until you have filled in the entire grid across the whole square. 
So that was the prep. So as I said, it's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of time, but once you get going and once you get your head around it, it's actually really easy. Now let's move straight into the steps for sewing this. What you find is the first couple of lines feel a little bit awkward because you feel like you're chopping and changing, but once you get into the flow, it actually gets much easier to do and you get used to working. So let's get sewing. Now your sewing machine in the middle of the square, line up with the corner of the line and sew down to the first intersection. Pivot the sample until you're lining up with the next line and then sew down towards that corner. And then keep sewing and pivoting until you reach the bottom of the sample. Now sometimes you may find that you're a stitch short of the intersecting line, that's okay. Just take a stitch at a time until you reach the corner. Sometimes you may find that you go a stitch or two over the intersection, that's also okay, don't worry about it, just line it up and just aim for the corner of the next rectangle. And just work your way down. Dead simple, very easy, just so pivot, so pivot and keep going. You can use a securing thread function on your sewing machine at the start and the end of these lines if you like. I don't do that, I prefer to secure mine with a zigzag around the outside of my quilts, but feel free to do however you prefer. I'm going to show you that one more time. I am wearing quilting gloves to help keep this nice and stable and feed it through. And you'll find that as you get into the rhythm of doing this, you'll get quicker and quicker sewing these lines. So now just to show you sewing at the edges of the sample, and this won't be such a problem when you are sewing an actual quilt because you will have overhanging batting and backing. But on this little sample, we have to sew almost right onto the very edge of the sample. So you can see my needle is on the very edge and sometimes it actually is off the edge of the sample but that's okay. Just pivot and then continue sewing on. If you're going to bind these samples, then that will be covered by the binding, so you don't need to worry if it looks a little messy. Again, as I said though, in an actual quilt, you would have excess backing and batting, so you wouldn't come up with this problem. You can see there, I'm just, I've gone off the edge and it's gone a little crumpled, but I just realign it and get it nice and flat and then sew again. And that will only happen on the far left and the far right sides of the squares. If it's getting a little fidgety at the end there, maybe get yourself a stiletto or a seam ripper just to give yourself a little bit of something to hold on to and keep the sample nice and stable. And that is the zigzag lines. So that was sewing. So like I said, you saw that once I got into the swing of things, it just flowed really easily. But the first couple of lines were just a little bit awkward as my brain got used to turning and lining things up. So simple. Now let's talk about some things that we want to watch out for when we're sewing this. When we get to the very outside lines, because this is just a small square sample and not an actual quilt that has backing and batting that is bigger than the actual quilt top, you will see that in the places I would be sewing off the edge of the sample where the line was cut off. Now that's not an issue when you're sewing an actual quilt because as I said you have extra backing fabric and you'll have extra batting that you can sew into and then you can continue on. But when you are sewing a small square like this, we don't have that extra. So what I sometimes do is either sew to the very edge, like one stitch away from the edge and then pivot and continue sewing, or I just sew off the edge, turn my fabric to where it needs to go and then continue on sewing. The edges will get bound anyway, so any of that will be hidden and we don't need to worry about it. But don't stress if you're sewing off the edge and wondering what to do, it will all be fine. When I started, I always start in the middle of these samples, doing the line or lines closest to the middle first to secure it so that I can get rid of my pins. And then I work from that middle line all the way to the right edge. When you get to those intersections, sometimes you can stop in a stitch or two short of the intersection, but that's okay turn your hand wheel on your sewing machine and move forward a step at a time or if your sewing machine has a function where it can do a stitch at a time just keep moving slowly forward until you reach that intersection. If you're still a little bit off and you've already pivoted don't worry about it it's fine because the lines are going to be gone so nobody will really know that you're a little bit off. As I mentioned the closer these lines are the more dense this quote will be 
if you're doing matchstick versions of this, it will be very dead. But on a big quilt, I would probably want to do this like four or five inches apart on it, maybe five or six, depending on what my batting allowed for, and that would give me a much fluffier quilt. You can also make these zigzags deeper. So rather than going square, square, you can go across two squares and that will make the zigzag deeper. And I'll put a little picture on screen just now showing you what I mean by that. And I said as well, you could also create some really nice, interesting effects by this by randomizing the directions of the line, maybe going right to left to start and then some going left to right. And that would create a really interesting look. And this little image shows you what I'm talking about. And you can see how this just looks very visually interesting and complicated, but really it was not difficult at all. So yeah, really easy to prep once you get your head around it, really easy to sew once you get into the flow of it, once you know how you're going to plan this on a quilt and sew it, it's a dotto. Now let's look at some example quilts and show you what I came up with using this design. So our first example up is the trusted carpenter square quilt. Now this takes a bit of planning to get this to look like this because we want zigzags to try and intersect on various sections. Now my focus was to get the zigzag to intersect in the middle of the quilt on the points. Ideally, this would be intersecting in lots of places, but my software decided not to play ball for me on this one. However, I think the overall effect still carries forward if you just ignore the fact that some of the points are just a little bit off. But I like this because it creates a kind of wavy curtain feel that runs down this quilt block, which is very different. And I wasn't 100% certain myself when I was thinking about this that it was going to work. But actually, I do like this. And I think that it would create a really interesting texture on this quilt. This was a wall hanging doing that really close together matchstick quilting it would make it lie very flat and I think it would look very fetching on a wall so maybe not for the first design you would think of for a carpenter star but I actually kind of like it Example number two is our favorite circle quilt. Now for this, I did have a very clear vision because I knew that this was gonna work very nicely. My first thought is I want a zigzag line running through the white space in the quilt, i.e. the background fabric. So if you look between the red and the gray squares, you will see that the line runs right down the middle of that space. This is also then mirrored on the outside edges of the quilt. Next, I wanted either two or three zigzags to intersect through the middle of each column of circles. So that works very nicely and I like this because the circle quilt was quite a modern looking quilt and when you add these zigzags which are deeper than the previous example i.e there's more zigs and zags than there was in the other one it gives it a very modern feel it creates a nice flow through the quilt this equally would look fine going left to right as well but i like how it creates a very different contrast and texture, you have the roundness of the circles that is broken up by the jarring of the zigzag. And I think that is very modern and works very nicely. So this is mm, kind of wants to be on my list to kind of make one of these to see what it looks like, but really can't because I've already got far too many quotes to be making, but it's a someday quilt. But I like this and I think that it's very, very nice. Very nice indeed. So we're getting a little bit fancy for example number three. Now this is a very simple quilt. It's a square and a square quilt. You've seen this many times before already. It's only made in two colors with a gray background. So this is dead simple. What takes this quilt and really elevates it to the next level is how we've paired and positioned these lines. We are highlighting the square in the square with the zigzag lines. I mentioned you could do things when you mirror them in, in the opposite direction or you group them together. So I've done both in this example. Group them together in twos and then I've done mirrored so you have some going from left to right and then some that go from right to left and when you space them so that they're around the square and the square like that it starts to create this kind of wonky grid feel through the white space but then it starts to feel like it frames or at least a wonky frame around that square and a square. Now I really like this I was so pleased with this when it turned out this way and I just I want to make one of these because I really like it it's so nice and when you're doing this and you're planning this you need to to figure out your grid so that these points intersect exactly in the middle of the square and the square block. So it, it will take a bit of planning, this one, but oh boy, is it worth it? Because look at that, that's just lovely, love it. Now just to show you another example of playing with the mirroring of these lines, here we have our bog standard single Irish chain quilt, which is just nine patches and background squares. And again, these zigzags, you can see, not only have I mirrored them, so some are left to right and some are right to left at the start, I've then positioned them so they cross over, but not symmetrically as you would maybe assume you'd want this to be symmetric. I've just randomly thrown these 
on and played with it. So some have wider spacing between the crossovers, other have tighter spacing between the crossovers. I'm not worried about making the points match anything on the nine patches or making them in the center or anything at all like that. I would just make sure when I'm doing it though that my spacing works with however wide the quilting can be done with the batting that you're using. So this very much reminds me of design number two from this series, the shattered glass that had the random lines, except the random lines this time are zigzags. Now, if you were to take this and you were to do shattered glass but with the zigzag lines that would just completely blow this quote out of the water and I would think that would look totally amazing and unexpected. You could also though if you want to play a little bit more you could take these zigzag lines and you could have them running diagonally with the lines of the Irish chain in this quilt. That could also be very cool and create a very cool movement through the quilt. But I like this because this is so simple but it's so effective and it takes a very traditional quilt block and it just gives it quite a modern twist i feel you know you would expect straight grids on this or diagonal grids or maybe even some curved piecing to accent this all the squares that are in this but doing this zigzag line just randomly placed it just it feels chaotic but it feels like it fits very nicely and i think this could be a lot of fun to look at because i think depending on the color of thread that you use this could create a really interesting texture across your quilt and again you could do this left to right top to bottom on the diagonal and just throw it on there and play with it so have a look back at design number two shattered glass and then come back and think about this one and have a play and just let your imagination run wild because i think there are so many possibilities that you could do with this design so those are the example quotes and i hope you like them as much as i did and so that was my zigzag lines my waves crashing in on the beach and i don't know why it makes me think of waves but it just does and I like it so yeah that's it it was simple and it was easy and I really hope that you liked it don't forget I am releasing a book that will accompany this series that will be coming out early in 2023 and if you would like to get onto the pre-order mailing list for that there is a link in the description below that you can sign up and there will be all sorts of exciting things going on about that as we get closer to the release date if you're sewing along I would love for you to tag me using the hashtag this is how you quote it and tag me the colorblind quilter so I can follow along and see what you have been quilting with these designs. In the next video, we are taking these zigzag lines and we are amplifying them to the next level with Chevron's Ahoy. This is another great Oliver quilting design that I really like. So if you like this design, please do give it a thumbs up because that will help my channel out. Why not subscribe and click the bell so you'll get notified when Chevron's Ahoy comes out. If you need to catch up with the previous designs in this series, there are links in the description that will get you everything that you need, including the worksheet with all the prep. If you're looking for something else to watch, why not check out this video and see what you think about that? So take care and I'll see you next time.